Right, I'm going to do a rundown on my conversion of one of these standard sandblasting cabinets into a cabinet for vapour blasting. So we'll start with the air supply side. I've got a line coming in from my compressor, which is in the other shed, into a regulator here. So I can regulate pressure for different purposes for the cabinet here. I mean, you could put one on the cabinet, but I've got two cabinets here. I've got one dry blasting cabinet and I've got the vapor blasting cabinet. So we often want to run different pressures. So handy having a regulator uh, and a water separator here. Now that line, that blue line is the one that uh, can feed the tools in here. So it can be for the vapor blasting cabinet or it can be for the dry blasting cabinet, or I might use it in a bucket of water to be washing parts with an air gun as well. So having air handy is uh, is key. That air line simply feeds a foot switch here. I'll have to find some details about this, but I'm pretty sure it's just an Amazon job. And uh, feeds into the cabinet via here. There's a little rubber grommet in here just to uh, seal up as best as I can. And then that line then feeds the uh, gun itself. From a pump and slurry perspective, just a standard uh, Bunnings bucket. I've got a Noizito 850 watt pump. And just, I've, before I pull it out and show you what the uh, fittings are, I'll just show you what I've done here as well. So this is just one of those standard high pressure um, plumbing fittings. So I can quickly and easily break the separation to the pump uh, and take it out and wash it out if I'm changing to a different media. So I didn't have that on the original build, but I've added it recently. And that just very quickly allows me to disconnect the pump. Uh, from an electrical perspective, the pump is just plugged into a junction box here. So incoming power from the GPO is here, and this switch runs the lights and then provides power to the pump. Now I have left the standard float switch in place, and I just hook it up behind the uh, it behind this line when I run and run it, and I'll just kick it out of the way to stop the pump. Now you could just use a switch or you could wire this in permanently, but for me, I haven't worried about that just yet. On the drain from the hopper, which would normally have sand in it if it was a sandblaster, I've just uh, cut up an old rubber glove and cable tied it to the outlet. And that just allows that um, drain water from the hopper to drain further into the bucket rather than just splashing around and bouncing off the pump. I just found there'd be water all over the place. So, I mean, there's water all over the place anyway, but uh, it was worse before I put that on. So that's a good addition. Any screw holes and things in the cabinet, I've just put grommets in. I have pulled this all apart and sealed it. It doesn't do a bad job, but like areas around here uh, where the gloves are tend to leak a bit. Around the screen, it tends to leak a bit. So just be prepared to make a mess, but otherwise it's functional. These obviously, these standard gloves are shit. They are saturated, so um, if you can find something better, go ahead, but um, I don't worry too much. I just uh, tolerate it and get on with the job. For lighting, this junction box also feeds a couple of uh, LED, outdoor LED lights that are inside the cabinet. So that's the, uh, drilled one hole to mount that into the corner. There's one in each corner. And all I've done is just run a line from that switch and just wire these in parallel with the switch. So when the switch is on, the lights are on and there's power to the pump via that so that all runs like that now these are all just uh, standard electrical fittings and silicon in the back here to try and seal it from any water um i'm not sure how long the lights are going to last but they've been working fine for now so i'm just going to run with it and they were pretty cheap okay now inside the cabinet i have put this curtain on which i stole this idea from somebody else just a piece of whatever rubber i had lying around the main reason is is no matter what you do you get a lot of media build up on the lip here and on the door so every time you open the door especially the dry blasting cabinets are worse this all just falls off onto the ground so you just end up making a mess so the idea is contain it as much as possible with this curtain so that just uh just hangs from i've got a bit of bar behind this with some holes in it and it just clamps the uh, curtain on via the rivets that i've drilled into the frame all right so if we have a look at the uh, business end so we've got the slurry line coming in airline in here and then inside the cabinet we have pretty sure it was 5 8 or 16 mil for the slurry and half inch for the air. Now there's plenty of debate and conjecture about the right sizes for the lines, but look, if you want to copy this one, this works okay um, with the setup I've got. So don't overthink it, just uh, build it. Okay, so that feeds the, um, the mixing gun. This is the Armoury Enterprises design made out of plumbing fittings and I do have a lathe so I made the air needle myself uh, so you can buy his little booklet I think it was like 12 bucks or something to explain how to build it if you've got a lathe or if not just buy one uh, there's different designs you can buy something off eBay if that's suited 
If I did put an air, a check valve in this airline, and there is a check valve in the water line too, I'll show that in a second, but not sure how much use this was, but uh, you really don't want um, to mix, well, you want, don't want water coming back up the airline and uh, air going up the water line. So anyway, I don't know how effective they are, but I have put them in there. So we'll see how we go. Now, I did put a white piece on the airline here, and that other one is feeding just an air duster, which is at the other end of the cabinet there. Uh, good idea to blow stuff off, but um, you need to have a decent duster because it gets full of slurry and glass and that just plugs it up. So haven't really used it. And the other thing that's in here is just a hand gun from a hose that runs around the other side there to the other side of the cabinet. And that's just, uh, I've got an inlet for a regular garden hose. So I can wash the inside of the cabinet out just with a, with a um, garden hose. And I'm about to do that now and do a media change, so I'll give you a demo of how, how all that works. All right, so just another look inside the cabinet with the lights on. There's just two little LED lights, 240 volt here in Australia. I think they were 20 bucks each at Bunnings, and they give off plenty of light, so that works pretty well. Uh, notice there's no fancy wipers, no screen cleaning. I just get the gun and I just blow some... Uh, slurry over the glass to rinse it off so you could get way more fancy but this is just a quick and easy way to get into it uh closed loop would be awesome but uh, a fair bit more complicated to set up and a bunch of extra pumps and everything else to make it run so this works fine and gets the job done so i just tend to tip out the uh, water that's in the bucket, which is pretty manky, but it'll uh, keep the grass going. And because uh, the glass is so heavy, if you're t very careful, you can generally tip out the water without taking the glass with it. And then just uh, give the old garden hose a bit of a hand, and literally you can clean this. And then just uh, tip this water out again and repeat a few times until that water comes out clean. Okay, so I'm going to do a media change, and there's what's left of my glass. There's a little bit of debris in there still, but it's pretty clean. The water that's sitting on there is basically clear, and uh, you've got to balance between how much stuff you get and how much media you want to lose when you tip it out. So that'll be fine for me. So we're going to put the lid on this one for glass and put it away. But before we do that, we have to clean the cabinet out. So I've got another, just another bucket under here, because obviously we're going to wash all the glass out of this cabinet into here and then I'm going to capture that put it in here before we switch over so I'll do that next all right I've just plugged the garden hose out in from the tap outside and we'll rinse out this cabinet and whatever parts are in here as well we'll give that a bit of a rinse too So having drained off all the water in the cabinet uh, that I used to wash the cabinet, there's a lot of media that was in the cabinet that wasn't in the um, bucket. So it does circulate, but once the hose or the water supply stops, whatever's up there just sits there and, um, and until it gets washed out again later on. So I would reckon there's got to be a kilo of media in there at least. So we'll put these in together and um, switch them over. All right, let's talk about the pump setup. So again, this is just the um, PDSW350, so 250 watts. And I think it's, oh, there you go, 7,000 liters an hour. So this one works okay. I think more power is probably better, but hey, this one works and it was about 80 bucks, so it's not that expensive. So oh, maybe, maybe 80, maybe 100, I can't remember. Um, but, so it's a standard pump outlet that comes with the pump. Now I have got a check valve in here, uh, but it doesn't seem to do too much because the water drains out of the slurry line immediately. So, and if I put a garden hose in here, I can back flush this pump, which in theory shouldn't be possible with this check valve. So don't get too stressed about the check valve if you can't get one. These aren't cheap. These are about 60 bucks, I think, but I found one on Marketplace for five bucks. So I put it in. But if I was building it again, I wouldn't bother with this, so you can delete that. So this is just regular old um, standard plumbing fittings you can get from Bunnings. Some of the stuff's from the irrigation oil, and some of it's from the plumbing oil. So from the outlet of the pump, I think it's 25mm right through. So 25mm through the check valve, so yeah, DN25 on this check valve. 
Now I've got a 25 mil T here and I had a ball valve or gate valve, sorry. This gate valve already sitting around in my shed. So what I wanted to do was be able to meter the flow that goes into the slurry circulation line. So this just lets me vary that. Now I haven't found, I've had to vary it too much, but it's been handy to have it in there. So that's pretty expensive if you get to buy one, but if you've got some sort of valve you can use, well, put something in there. That way you can just adjust this flow rate that goes in here. So this is just a T um, with the valve and an elbow and a barb fitting and a bit of hose. It's not the same as the slurry line, so it's probably, I don't know, five eighths, 16 inch, whatever it is. I don't think it matters too much, but um, what you don't want to do is have too much water bypassing the slurry line and then going in to circulate the, the uh, water in the bucket. So that's the reason I put this in and no really good reason in terms of the uh, line sizes apart from, hey, looks like it should work and it does. All right, so, so I have a couple of different setups here um, with different media. So this is the glass that we're just uh, draining out of the cleaning bucket. And I have another one with aluminium oxide and glass. And I have another one up on the shelf there, which is just aluminium oxide. So the reason for that is I can run three different types of media uh, with one, basically one pump setup. So um, that's the reason why I'm washing the cabinet out is because I'm gonna be switching it over to aluminium oxide and glass. And the reason I wanna do that is I've got some engine cases around here somewhere that have got, oh, here's an example here, this one here. This one, I haven't been able to clean all this paint and gunk off just with glass beads. So I'm gonna be switching to aluminium oxide. Now aluminium oxide works good as well, um, but you generally have to go back over it with glass to get the finish you're looking for. So something similar to that, that's done with glass, which has come up very nicely for a 50 year old bit of Harley uh, starter motor engine uh, bracket. So yeah, I'm switching to aluminium oxide and glass so I can get rid of all this remainder paint and hopefully polish up the case in one shot. So I haven't used this all yet. This is the first time this has gone in. So it's glass and that grey stuff is aluminium oxide. So I don't know, it's around 50-50. But uh, first time using it, I'll give it a crack. So I just... Fill the bucket up two thirds, three quarters of the way up. I don't worry about putting the pump on a plinth or anything to raise it up. I haven't found that's necessary. Just uh, switch the pump on, let it do its thing. Right, I've got the throttle assembly that we'll give it a, a quick clean to and see how they came up. So uh, now generally I will aim to degrease 99% of this as best I can. This had a whole lot of graphite in it from the throttle tube assembly. So I've cleaned that out with uh, Carby Cleaner. And we'll put half in and hopefully when we finish we'll be able to see the difference between the two halves. So I'll whack this guy in here and uh, let's see how it goes. Now, like a dickhead, I didn't turn the camera on when I did the first pass on this uh, housing. It's come up much better. Uh, but what I've done is just dropped the pressure down to about 30 psi just to see if I can get a better shine on it from the glass bead. So higher pressure for cleaning and then lower pressure for a better surface when you Let's do the second pass and see how it goes. Okay, so there's the finish difference between the two of them. So the blasted part just seems to have a very satin finish. Now it depends on the metal as well. This is die car or something or other. Uh, it really depends on the metal and the, to, to, to dictate the surface finish, but it's a lot cleaner and uh, smoother. So I'll take that as a win.
and you know I've got a, an entire tub full of parts that I've blasted here in the last few days you know rocket covers and engine parts and carby parts and all sorts of stuff so I'm pretty happy with the results this thing's getting me so if you've got any questions uh, drop them in the comments or hopefully by the time this video goes up I might have written something on my website to explain all the stuff I used and how to build one so cheers thanks for watching